yes. What? The highest of all Toyota nerds, nothing tops this. It's over 10 years old now, and it's still the greatest car ever made. Nothing is left to chance with the LFA. <clears throat> Give me a minute. I'm not done yet. Ooh. Ooh. I am now about to drive an LFA. Here's the starting procedure. Key on. Both paddles to neutral. Engine start. Reverse is over here. Remove the electric parking brake. Now back up. The camera car, the 812 super fast. Okay, now to put it both at the same time. Window down. And catch up with the Ferrari. I'm driving an LFA. Fuck everyone but me. Did you know I'm a geisha? Eat sushi off my balls. I'm driving an LFA. Look at my dick. Keep staring. I can't wait to stand in front of you and come. This episode of RCR is brought to you by Manscaped, trusted by 8 million men worldwide for their trimmers, hygiene, and shower formulations, and premium boxers, which is what this is. Introducing the Beard Hedger Pro Kit by Manscaped. So whether you've managed your mane for years or just getting started, what does the perfect beard grooming regimen look like? The Beard Hedger has more than 20 hair cutting lengths that can be selected by their zoom wheel. You get 20 lengths with only one guard, so you don't have to worry about a million clip-on ones and you're losing those things all the time. And not all beard hairs grow the same. You can see that my the goatee area, the mustache, and the, the area under my chin, that is thicker and grows faster than sort of the sideburn area of my beard. So I am trimming the mustache and under the, my chin area shorter than I am trimming the, the sideburns area. Then when you're done, clean your beard to make it smell amazing. Beards can trap dirt and oils near the skin, causing irritation and unpleasant smells. Manscaped Beard Conditioner pampers your beard with nourishing oils and antioxidants that rehydrate hair and leave your beard feeling silky and soft. You also get free beard accessories that include the beard comb, beard scissors, and beard brush. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free shipping when you use promo code RCR20. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code RCR20 at manscaped.com. I just got done hiking and I was gonna wash them, but the owner said, don't worry about it, just go to the thing with your dirty shoes. I'm getting into an LFA with dirty shoes. I don't know how I feel about this. Everything about this car is made to get inside my zone. What number is it? Of course it's that number. Carbon fiber is real. 
because at a glance, even people I met knew it was, oh, that's a nice Lexus, but don't know exactly how good it really is. It's just plain, plain looking. And it just made a noise. I've now driven both of these things, and I can tell you, if I can just make the seat go back for the air goes. I can tell you that the LFA is way better than a Ferrari Superfast. The LFA is an alien. It is weirder to drive, but for me feels more familiar. It's 9,000 RPM, I'm getting nowhere near that. I'm tempted to just put it in first. How big of a baller do you have to be as a company to make a car that's under no obligation to make money? A project that never has to justify its existence financially. The LFA is under no such criteria. Toyota made this for no other reason than pleasure and vanity. That's crazy because we're conditioned to try to find practical reasons for a car to exist. But there's nothing practical about an LFA. There's no utility. Just an experience that ruins every other car you'll drive. The Lexus LFA is the point of no return. Because really, how am I supposed to go back? Driving this car is like getting blown by the Sarlacc pit. It's like raw dogging a lightning bolt. It's like talking your, to your dog and suddenly he starts talking back. This stops you dead in your tracks. This is the machined aluminum flashlight. Fine threads. No batteries in it though. It goes down here. There are some moments with the LFA, like at, at the height of these cars, these were $1.3 million. And it's a 2012. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Okay. At its height, $1.3 million. <laughs> um, so there's still stuff that dates it. It's got your Game Boy Advance backup screen that doesn't work because you can't see behind it. You have this mouse thing. Sugar. Oh wait, I can't. All oh, right. Wait. Oh, that's right. I can't start it unless I put it in neutral. And you can't put it in neutral until you. I need another hand here. Fred, hold the hold the one flappy paddle in. Uh, I got it. <laughs> there. Now it's in neutral. Now, the red button right here on the dash. The door handles are no other part that's shared. It's just an exposed pivot there. However, the hood release is still the 1980s mold down here has not changed in like 40 years. It's still that, and the hood still goes tong, even though it's a carbon fiber hood. I didn't even think this thing had a trunk. Oh, it's the, oh, it's glass. It's just a hatch here. And, uh, yeah, and there's nothing under, there's like a parcel. Privacy, oh, it's nothing. It's literally nothing. 
just a roadside emergency kit and another emergency kit and a battery tender over here. It's true, the catalytic converters are so good on this, there's no exhaust smell at all. From a dead stop, you go zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds. I, I feel like I've wasted my life for every day I wasn't driving this car. Not that I could have been, but it creates wealth envy in a way more expensive cars just haven't. It's that good. I made a special trip out west just to drive this and hang out with my friends Riley and Frederick Knudsen. You know Frederick Knudsen from the YouTube channel Down the Rabbit Hole, and he is also a guest reviewer of this car. It was a lot of fun to bring along a friend who isn't a car guy and put him in one of the greatest, maybe the greatest car ever made. Here, have my unfiltered thoughts, you swine. <laughs> I want to make it completely clear, I am not a car guy. I have familiarity with cars. If you put me in the driver's seat of pretty much any car or truck, I'll be able to drive it. I have experience with uh, with manual transmissions. I have experience um, driving a lot of different cars. So it's not like I'm unfamiliar with the practice of doing so. I am not a car guy. This did not turn me into a car guy. But now I get it. Um, the fact that I could get all the power that I needed out of them. I could reach the speed that I wanted at any moment, almost immediately. That was remarkable. And, and we didn't even do any racetrack driving. I can only imagine what these things would be capable of on the, on the track. Um, but for just driving on the highway on these really tight corners, I could not imagine fucking up in that car unless I pushed it to its absolute extreme limit. But as it was, taking those corners as hard as I was, I was fighting the lateral Gs on those corners. I can't imagine going any faster without being thrown from my seat or getting some straps to hold me in place. One thing that was a little bit frustrating for both cars was it was remarkably difficult to see everywhere. Uh, and obviously this maybe is less of a concern. What's more of a concern is the shape of the body. Um, but at certain points, I was really feeling the limitation of my uh, of my view, my field of view. Hell, when we were backing the Toyota LFA to get into position to take photos and video, I had to guide you. I think the A12 has better brakes. Now it is a newer car. The A12 feels like a supercar. The LFA feels like a Celica. It has those kind of dimensions. But it doesn't sound like one. Oh, those shifts. There also is a lot of valve train noise and quite a bit of transmission noise. Oh, these corners are great. How could I ever drive anything else after driving this? Yes, I know electric cars, maybe, but blah, blah, blah. But a Japanese car having soul like this, interesting. Steering is a little bit, uh, well, well, it's not darty. Like everything about it is predictable. Oh, hello, straight from your high school's computer room. I know this is like an elementary school, like safe for kids. You better not be on new grounds. <laughs> now, this has a mouse right there. There's that. It's, no one uses this anymore because it's such a bad idea to take, wait a minute. Wait, there's a little stepper motor in here. There's a stepper motor inside the mouse. So when it goes over a button, there's, when it goes over something up here, there's resistance down here. Fred, you gotta feel this. Oh, what the hell? What? what? Oh, oh, that's weird. Huh. Oh, it's, oh, that's funky. I don't know how I feel about this. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to sleep on this. What? 
I get the necessity. It's like, it's, you know what it is? It's almost like they recognize that the idea inherently was bad. But somebody said, no, we have to do this, right? Like, I'm, I am not shipping this until it has this little screen. And so the engineers had to come up with just the most elegant solution to a stupid idea. <laughs> so what happens when I go into, oh, here to get to my climate settings, I have to go through the menu. Wait, what? Now, how do I click? Oh, the buttons to click are here. Because like it's a, a mouse. real, a real. All right, so click on climate. You guys aren't going to believe this. Have you seen Windows XP? <laughs> this is going to be huge. It's, we it, have to get a mouse in our in our fucking car. But there's no. But there's no. Now there's no detents here. It doesn't click through all of these. Or or maybe it will if I turn the car on again. I. Hmm, that's a good question. So, is there a button here to go back, or do I have to go up in the corner? Maybe it's the right mouse button? Okay, when I go up to that, when it lights up, the detent clicks in again. The little step, the little thing stops it. Again, it's an elegant solution to a problem that shouldn't exist. I can have AM, FM, CD, DVD. Is there a CD in here? Alright, there's something in here, so... Where's the tape? Where is the CD coming out of? Oh. Oh. All right, what are you listening to? Oh, it well, went down. Well, are you kidding me? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to chronicle this. <laughs> Give me the GoPro. We were trying to figure out where the CD came out. The CD comes out here, and the CD that came out of this Lexus LFA is Blink-182. Look, the only reason this car exists, the only reason it can exist, is because Toyota built up a reputation through the Camry, the Corolla, the RAV4, the, the Tundra, the Sequoia, all those just boring non-AN cars. They built the foundation on which the LFA stands. When people trust the product you make, when they can rely on it, then $375,000 doesn't sound like that big of an ask when it actually is, but it is a big ask for the accountants. Because of course, Toyota lost money on every single car they made. Then again, this was never intended for you or I to own. Even at the time it was made, the LFA was more of a proof of concept an opportunity for Toyota to just drape themselves in carbon fiber construction since the aluminum chassis, the concept version I was built in, wasn't good enough when aluminum isn't good enough. Toyota ended up making 500 of these worldwide. I'm not sure of the exact numbers that made it to the United States. I've heard 150, I've heard 175. The LFA went through several prototypes over the course of its 10-year production cycle. However, every single one of these cars is a 2012. The story of the LFA begins in the year 2000, and by 2003, the first prototype was revealed, but it was a rough prototype. By 2004, a prototype was made that was ready for testing. By 2007, they, everything got thrown out, and they started using carbon fiber reinforced plastic. By 2008, this was being uh, tested in Germany to make sure it was up to standards, and two years later, the first of them were finally ready to come off, come off the factory line. That was 2010. At roughly half the cost of a Ferrari Enzo and lighter than the Corvette ZR1, the Lexus LFA follows from Akito Toyota's belief that the ultimate Lexus should connect to the driver. Because a typical Lexus doesn't connect with the driver. It's just a very, it's just a, a Lexus is just a box of smug, isn't it? A very well-made box of smug, but a boring car. A Lexus exists to be valued, to be worshipped, and be doted on. A Lexus is a, is a house cat. But no matter how good Lexi have become, they, did, they never had the prestige of other luxury brands that were made worse. Four-wheel kaleidoscope of manifest excellence. Makes 553 horsepower and a surprisingly smaller 354 pound-feet of torque. 
but you're not meant to rely on the torque. This engine revs to 9,000 RPM. Some people pray to a divine author, others create a savior from whatever their principles will allow them to worship. Well, if you like build quality and performance, if you like a car that looks cool and sounds amazing and feels like the long withheld handshake of a distant father, then fall to your goddamn knees. The seat belt buckles are very strange. I think this is like a light sensor on the bottom. I've never seen seat belt buckles that look like this. And then there's another receiver down there in the buckle. The, the sun visors have no mirror on the inside. And also up here, you can't, it's not a sensing mirror, which I kind of like that Toyota did that. It's still, this is a Toyota parts bin stuff on your $1.3 million car. The seat heater controls are this little slidey knob down there, left and right. And your bottom mounted pedals down there are, oh my God, did you hear that? Just that. If I had to use a word to describe everything in a Lexus LFA, it is click. Things, things are click heavy and deliberate. Nothing feels cheap, but it is a car that Lexus was just sucking their own dicks with. And I really would like to do that to the designers though. Because will there be a car like this again someday? I feel honored just to sit in it. Oh, these door handles. This is peak Toyota engineering, which is wild because it's not even like Toyota was the only cook in the spoon of this chili. Of course, the 4.8 liter, 4.8 liter tiny V10 was co-developed by Yamaha. The transmission is the Eisen Source SA6. It supposedly uses resources from Toyota's Formula One team. I mean, the engine certainly sounds like an F1 car. I know it's a, you know, and I'm making myself a little bit road. Am I getting, am I making myself car sick here? I think I am. Maybe I belong back in that Ferrari. Hang on, guys. This was a collaborative effort to prove Lexus could be more than just a car driven by a boss who responds to worker complaints with a pizza party. I keep bringing up this number, and I have to find proof of it, that it was 1.3 million was the record for selling one of these things. And part of the appeal here is the inaccessibility, a true piece of art that was never meant to last. It was never a production car, and to call this a production car is just a way to cheat this thing into some sort of record book. This is like that golden Wu-Tang album that no one ever heard. Too many brands clutch defeat from the jaws of indifference. They take cars you could easily ignore and make them opulently repellent. It's not enough to race to the bottom. You have to tie sandbags around your nuts and jump off the high dive. Mustangs just keep getting angrier and louder and pricier. The 2024 Mustang is going to have a remote rev option so you don't have to be in the car to annoy people. It's a novelty because that's what passes for innovation these days. And cynicism fills every crevice from design to production. And look, the auto business has always, always been about the almighty dollar. No business produces anything just for people to enjoy themselves because performing a service for free is a great way to have people never value that service. But the number crunching feels apparent in modern car design in a way it didn't even 10 years ago. Every car has had every component fussed over by an accountant, focus group to death, and geared with pre-written headlines in mind. So when something comes along that doesn't place money at the center of its reason for existing, well, do you even make something like that? How can you not be animated by money? How, how is this not the thing that gets you up in the morning? This is a horrifically expensive car that doesn't care about money. Look at what's possible when we 
use both our hands, to use both our middle fingers, to press them right in the eyes of the accountants. F you, we're making this because the people of this planet deserve engineering beauty. The Lexus LFA is a reminder not only of what money is for, but what life is for. Drive fast. Eat slow. Have a second helping. Stay out late. Make plans. And then cancel them. Stay home. Live. Money cannot be all there is. Let me say that again. Money cannot be all there is. Even as life becomes more expensive, even as more people find themselves unable to avoid having to think about money all the time, like a troll with overdraft fees, even as people struggle to find work, and then they find work and it only pays just enough for basic sustainability. Now I know, you can't live for free, and that sucks. But you can't live for money either, even with financial limitations. Go find things to enjoy about life and keep yourself sane. But here's the twist. The same is true for an abundance of money. I believe money can't buy happiness is the dumbest phrase ever uttered. Because it sure as hell does. But it also buys peace of mind which is the building block of lasting happiness. But in order for you to keep your money, cash must rule everything around you in a very Wu-Tang way. So when you have become comfortable in one way or another, go seek out things that exist for no other reason than to bring satisfaction into your life. Addendum. Go seek out positive things to bring satisfaction into your life. Something to drown out the racket of existence, of work and bank accounts and taxes. Something to open a window and let in a hopeful tune. When I drove her, it was one perfect day, just the one that I love, 2010 LFA, a carefree. Lexus Sport and it feels like the thrill of acquittal in traffic court But it's too steep, a price I can't pay And less than a thousand of these have been made A carefree Lexus Sport and I feel like a kid playing Forza Horizon If you don't know this song, ask your girlfriend. She'll probably know. Or maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> uh.